J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with I Feel a Song coming on. <laughs> in the air around you. It's written in people's faces. It's anywhere and everywhere. The wonderful excitement that comes with Christmas week. Now when spirits are high and appetites are keen, Jell-O is the perfect dessert for you to serve. For Jell-O's festive shining colors, its delicious fresh fruit flavor are right in keeping with the gaiety of the season. So let Jell-O help you celebrate your holidays. Serve it in any one of its six delicious flavors. Flavors unusually rich because they come from fresh, ripe fruit. But just remember that there is only one Jell-O, and only Jell-O brings you that extra rich fruit flavor. So make no mistake, insist on the real thing. Insist on genuine Jell-O. bring you a man who stands for good wholesome entertainment, who stands for bright sparkling humor. In fact, a man who stands for almost anything, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello again. This is standing Jack Benny talking. <laughs> Listen, Don, I may be easy going and all that, but there's a limit to just how much I will stand. I think you found that out the past few weeks. But uh, I've never really seen you blow up, Jack. Well, that's because I managed to keep myself under control. But if I ever lose my temper, well, I just hope I'm not around when it happens. <laughs> oh, Jack, you haven't such a temper. Why, I've heard you argue with Phil Harris, and you've been as gentle as a lamb. Yes, Don, but you'll never know the battle that goes on inside of me. <laughs> How I have to fight to hold myself back. Well, that's generally a nice, safe quarrel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jack, I, I don't want to interfere, but I do think that since Christmas is so near that you and Phil ought to make up. No, Don. The wound is too deep. <laughs> you see, you only know me on the surface, but there are really two Jack Bennies. There's the patient, amiable, fun-loving fellow you see around the studio. And then there's that other me. Stark, savage, primitive. A throwback to the Stone Age. <laughs> I tell you, Don, one minute I'm as meek as a mouse, and then all of a sudden I'm Vesuvius erupting. My, my. Well, anyway, I'm through coddling people around here, and that goes for Phil Harris or anybody else. You know, you can go just so far, and then the worm turns. You're right, Jack. I'll say I am. Hello, worm. <laughs> well, I haven't turned yet. You better watch your step, too, Murray. What I just said about Phil goes for everybody on this program. I'm not worried about you. I've got my own troubles. You know, I just had an awful fight with myself. You did? You may not know it, Jack, but there are two Mary Livingstons. Oh, there are. Yes. There's the quiet, home-loving me who spends the time in the kitchen. I see. And then there's the other me, wild, reckless, with a yen for caviar and cheap jewelry. <laughs> Oh, so, so you've got a dual personality, too. Have I? I'm a regular Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde. Well, uh, say, Don, did Phil get here yet? Oh, yes, Jack. He's right on time tonight. He must have read my thoughts last week. Believe me, it's good to put your foot down once in a while. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. <laughs> hello, Kenny. Say, what kind of a hello was that? That was my other self talking. <laughs> hey, Don, look who's got another self. <laughs> Oh, yeah? I've got two me's, too. Oh, you have, eh? Huh? Sure. There's one me that you all know around the studio, good-natured, dumb, and unconscious. Oh. And then there's the real me, smart, bright, and witty. <laughs> Why don't you bring him around sometime? <laughs> oh, Mary, leave him alone. Mm, that guy don't know enough to come in out of the rain. He does, too. Come in where? <laughs> Forget it, Kenny. It doesn't rain in California anyway. It doesn't? No. 
Then what keeps falling out of the sky, orange juice? <laughs> well, maybe the weather has a dual personality, too. You know, there are two sides to everything and everyone. Don't you think so, Don? Positively. And now that you brought it up, you know, Jack, you may not believe this, but there are really two Don Wilsons. Oh, I can see that, Don. <laughs> <laughs> but a little dieting will take care of that, you know. Oh, you're laughing at my expanse. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm serious. But all kidding aside, I, I too have another self. Oh. There's the quiet, retiring me who just says, Jell-O is the fastest selling gelatin dessert in the world, and every day millions of people eat it. I see. And then there's that other me that says the Jell-O has six delicious oh. flavors strawberry, oh. raspberry, cherry, orange, oh. lemon, and lime. Why, Don, you frighten me. Oh, oh quit Playboy. Don, go back to your other self. You can tell she comes from Dixie, conducted by Phil Harris, who also has a dual personality. By that I mean he's a two-timer. <laughs> you know, during every number, he waves one hand at the orchestra and the other at the girls in the audience. And it's got to stop. All right, I'll quit waving at the orchestra. Well, at least that'll help the music. Oh, you've even poisoned the boys in the band against me. I have not. You haven't? Then why don't they laugh at my joke? Why don't you say something funny? Hmm. I don't want to establish a precedent around here, that's why. <laughs> that's awfully good. Laugh at him, boys. <laughs> well, at least they were together. That's more than I can say about their music. <laughs> Zowie! <laughs> what happened? Uh, Jack thought he said something funny. Hmm. It's a fine bunch I'm associated with. Now, what's the matter with you, Jack? Every year you pick a fight with us. Well, what about it? Last year it was just before Christmas, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to do my Christmas scrapping early. Jack, why don't you consider my suggestion and make up with Phil? How about it, Phil? Well, I'm willing if that horseless cowboy is. <laughs> yeah? Well, I'm not a horseless cowboy. No, you're a brainless master of ceremonies. Oh, yeah? That means fight in my country. I wish we were there. <laughs> Gee, a little geography saves Jack a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. There'd be a lot of trouble right now if it wasn't that Kenny has to sing his songs. I can wait, Jack. You'll sing when you're supposed to, not when you're ready. <laughs> oh, this thing's getting worse and worse. Come on, Jack. Now make up with Phil. What do you say? No, Don. I realize this is the time of year when we must forgive and forget. But even this holiday spirit cannot erase the scar that has been etched into my heart. Oh, Jack, you're making a scar out of a molehill. No, I'm not. Did you ever hear that famous poem by Ludwig Schmutz? <laughs> James Arthur. That tonight. poem <laughs> called Barrett with a Grin? No. Well, it goes something like this. When your soul is torn asunder, by some fellow's thoughtless blunder, 
and your trouble deep down under, bear it with a grin. When he makes your life so dreary, and your eyes with tears are bleary, and you're oh so gosh darn weary, ha <laughs> ha, bear it with a grin. Manny. <laughs> so if your false friend should forsake you, and a fool he tries to make you, point at him and say, you snake you, and... I say it with a groan. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I guess you know how I feel about it now, Don. Sing, Kenny. And my poems are supposed to be bad. Yeah. <laughs> Jealous of the moon, jealous of a summer night in June. Why can they remain beside my darling while I must leave so Summer Night, sung by Kenny Baker. And tonight it seemed to have an extra touch of tenderness. But there's one thing that puzzles me, Kenny. How can you say so many dumb things and yet sing so sweetly? Well, I don't have to think when I sing. Oh. <laughs> I bet he's got a record in his mouth. <laughs> I doubt it. Oh, Jack. Yes, Don. I uh, don't want to interrupt the program, but I may not get to see you again until after Christmas. That's right. Well, uh, come to the point, Jack. Uh, Mary, Kenny, and I got together and bought you a little Christmas present, which I hope you like. Well, <laughs> thanks, Don and Mary. You too, Kenny. Oh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Uh, here you are, Jack. Here, I imagine it's something awfully nice. <laughs> well, well. Gee, this is a surprise. A gold button hook. Uh-huh. Say, that'll come in handy. Of course, I haven't worn button shoes in a long time, but if they ever come back, boy, I'll be all set. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it, Jack. Mmm, it's a beautiful button hook. And gold, too. Yeah, and there's a toothpick on one end. <laughs> oh, there sure is. <laughs> well. If teeth ever come back, you'll be all set. <laughs> well, thanks, kids. I, I sure appreciate this. See, you must have gone back 20 years to get it. Oh, it wasn't any trouble, Jack. No, I imagine it wasn't. Huh? Now, uh, uh, gather... <laughs> gather around, everybody. It's my turn to play Santa Claus. I got a little surprise for most all of you. Here's a little gift for you, Kenny. 
A beautiful red silk necktie. Oh, thanks, Jack. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? Gee. <laughs> You know, this looks like the same tie I gave you last year. Well, it isn't. It's different. Yeah, it's got spots on it now. <laughs> Quiet. He can have it clean. And, Don, here's a present for you. It's something I know you'll love. See, what is it? A box of genuine jello. Oh, goody! <laughs> yeah, I knew you know, love my, it. You know, my wife's going to give me a sliced pineapple for Christmas, and they'll go swell together. Oh, they sure will. Um... Oh, Jack. What? Where's the present I'm going to exchange? <laughs> Here, and don't be funny. Hmm. Change. What is it? What is it? Can't you see? It's an earring. An earring? Yeah. One earring? Where's the other one? Well, there'll be other Christmases, won't there? <laughs> this is a fine present. Now I'll be lopsided. Yeah. Put it on, Mary. That's a style now, anyway. One earring. Uh, Jack, uh, didn't you forget somebody? Not anybody that didn't forget me. <laughs> but to show you the difference in characters, come here, Mary. Here's a present for him. <laughs> you give it to him. Okay. Here, Phil. Jack told me to give you this Christmas present. What is it? It's a curling iron. <laughs> a curling iron? Yes. Thanks, only my hair is naturally curly. Well, if it ever straightens out, you'll be all set. <laughs> and incidentally, it's time for your next number, so stop grinning at the girls in the audience and play. All right, Simon. Yeah, now wait a minute. I may be exacting, but I'm no Simon Legree. I meant simple Simon. Oh. <laughs> now I'm stumped. Well, go ahead and play a number, smarty pants. <laughs> Say, Mary, how do you like that earring I gave you? Fine. My ear's turning green already. Mm. Some Christmas spirit around here. Mm. Some presents, too. Yeah. Mutiny in the Brass Section, played by Curly Harris, the kink of jazz. <laughs> and incidentally, folks, not that I care, but evidently Mr. Harris has never heard that it's better to give than to receive. Imagine a guy not reciprocating after you've given him a swell curling iron. Hmm. Swell? It isn't even electric. Hmm, I suppose you like Benjamin Franklin to autograph it. <laughs> what a guy. And now, folks, this being our last program... That's me, Oh, well, come in. Hello, Dick Barney. Well, hello, Patsy. Hey, it's good to see you again. How'd you happen to drop in? Well, it's the holiday season, and I'm bringing you time greetings. Well, thanks. What are you doing these days, Patsy? Can you read Hengel? Hengel. <laughs> of course I can read English. Then here's my card. Hmm, Pat C. Flick. Suit, clothes, and Merry Christmas. <laughs> so you're in the clothing business now, huh? Yes, sir. And, Jig, to start a bowl rolling, I brought you a Christmas present. Well, that's very nice of you, Pappy, but you didn't have to do it. Don't mention it, cutie. <laughs> I'm sentimental. Oh. Oh, look at this, a brand new suit. Is it really a present for me? It's not for Marlene Dietrich. <laughs> well, it sure is a nice gesture. 
Hey, wait a minute. There's only the pants and vests here. Where's the coat? That'll cost you $75. <laughs> I see. Well, I don't need a new suit. You don't need a suit. Look at that coat you're wearing. What's wrong with it? The tatus I wouldn't put in that bag. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't, eh? And look at the cheap material. You call this a pocket? <laughs> See? Hey, wait a minute. Hold on there. What are you doing to Jack? Don't interrupt the sale. <laughs> Say, you've got a lot of nerve. And look at this, please. Now, is that a coat I asked you? Not now it isn't. No. <laughs> and look at those pins. Shall I leave the room, Jack? <laughs> no, this has gone far enough. Here, take back your pants and vest and get out of here. Well, that chisel. You give a guy a present and you don't even reciprocate. <laughs> well, goodbye and Happy New Year. Who needs it? Hey! <laughs> Look at my coat all ripped and torn. I got a date with a doll right after the program. <laughs> now, what are you laughing at? If it's a rag doll, you're all set. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, this being our last program before Christmas, tonight we are going... What's that? Oh, Grant Hall! Well, look who's Hello, there. Buck! Well, Sheriff Andy Devine. Glad to see you, Andy. Oh, uh, glad to see you too, Buck. <laughs> what brings you here tonight? <laughs> well, ain't you and me going out looking for Cactus Face Elmer, the outlaw? Doggone it, Andy. We got to arguing and talking up here tonight and giving out presents. I'm afraid we won't be able to do Buck Benny Rides again until next Sunday. Oh, shucks. Yeah. And I'm all dressed up in my cowboy suit. <laughs> well, don't take it so hard. <laughs> Come over next Sunday and you can play with us. Sorry you had to make this long trip, Andy. <laughs> well, I didn't mind coming over. I'm kind of stuck on Mary, you know. <laughs> Stop blushing, Andy. I ain't blushing, I'm boiling. <laughs> well, Andy, I'm sorry about Buck Benny. I really am. I'm... Well, um, I'm sure disappointed, too. I know how you feel. Oh, doggone it. But you know, Buck, that reminds me of a poem by Ludwig Schmutz. <laughs> <laughs> good, old, good old Schmutzy. Yeah, good old Schmutzy. <laughs> By Ludwig, huh? Yes, sir, and it goes something like this. When you're just a buckaroo, and Buck Benny you cannot do, don't feel bad and don't feel blue. <laughs> just bear it with a grin. <laughs> ah, those are real sentiments, Andy. Ludwig sure went to town on that one, huh? Well, so long, Buck. See you next week. So long, Andy. So long. Woo! He sure has a lot of fun, doesn't he, huh? Well, I gotta run along now, fellas. The program is nearly over anyway. I don't think you need me here any longer tonight. And besides, I've got a date, so I'm gonna go. Uh, goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Jack, and a Merry Christmas. Same to you. So long, Don. Goodbye, Kenny. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Jack. Jack. Same to you. Well, so long. Hey, Jack. Yeah? Merry Christmas to you. Same to you, Phil. <laughs> goodbye. Wait a minute, Jack. I want to talk to you. Well, hurry up. I've got a date. Listen, Jack, I think we've both been acting like a couple of kids. But I want to tell you one thing, and it comes right from my heart. I've been with you 12 weeks now, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> you wouldn't know it. <laughs> of course, sometimes you've tried to act hard-boiled, but deep down underneath, you're a regular guy. No, I am, am I? Well... I'm going. Wait a minute, Jack. Just to show you how I feel about you, here's a little Christmas present. Thanks. Well, why don't you open it? Oh, you open it. It's probably some trick. <laughs> Gee, I hope you like it, Jack. Oh, I already said thanks. <gasps> Gee, look, fellas. Gosh, gee whiz. Oh, Jack, look. Why, it's the most beautiful watch I've ever seen. I've got a watch. <laughs> and look at that platinum case and diamonds all around it. I thought so. If I wear that, somebody will hold me up and hit me over the head. Oh, 
Oh, gee, it's beautiful, Phil. Oh, it certainly is. is. Oh, Jack, that's really something. Hmm. See, it, it is pretty, isn't it? See, platinum and diamonds all around it. Gee, thanks, Phil. You're welcome, Jack. Oh, boy, that, that is gorgeous, huh? Well, Phil, I... Yeah, I hardly know what to say now. I feel so... Oh, I don't know. I... Oh, forget about it, Jack. Yeah, I, I wish I'd have bought you an electric iron now. I think... <laughs> Boy, I... Say, I'll bet this must have set you back plenty, huh, Phil? Well, just don't fire me for about two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phil, all I can say is I'm terribly sorry for everything that happened, and... See if I can ever do anything for you. And if you, if you ever want to know what time it is, don't hesitate to ask me. You know? I don't value anything, Jack, as much as I do your friendship. Gee, I, I didn't know you felt that way. See, but, but all I can say is, well, thanks, Phil. Oh, you're welcome, Jack. Merry oh. Christmas. <laughs> Come on, fellas, come on, pull yourselves together. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you could all be here to witness this touching display of friendship. In fact, I I personally am so moved that I can hardly say that the... Jello is the most tempting skeleton to search the world. So just be sure to get the genuine Jello with a big red letter on the back. <laughs> Is there a Santa Claus? You bet your life there is, and you'll be more certain of it than ever once you taste Jell-O chocolate pudding. It's the best that comes your way since the old days when your grandmother made chocolate pudding. Smoother, creamier, more chocolatey, with a grand homemade flavor. That's Jell-O chocolate pudding. And it's amazingly easy and inexpensive to make. Here's all you do. Mix the contents of one package with some milk in the top of your cup cool, and this delicious pudding is all ready to be served in your sherbet glasses. And if you want to give it an extra special Christmas touch, add some raisins or toasted nuts or both. You'll get six luscious servings from each package of Jell-O chocolate pudding, which sells for the same low price as Jell-O. Ask your grocer about it tomorrow. If he hasn't put it in stock yet, be sure he orders it for you. Remember the name, Jell-O chocolate pudding. last number of the 12th program in the new Jell-O series. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time when you will hear our next installment of Buck Benny Rides Again. Well, fellas, I was going out on a party tonight, but I'd much rather be with a gang. Come on, let's all go out and make whoopee. Okay, hey, boy, boy. How about you, Phil? Thanks, Jack, but I've already got a date tonight. Oh, bring her along. And if she's got a girlfriend, bring her along for me. She has, Jack, but her girlfriend isn't very pretty. Oh, I don't care. Filthy, as long as I'm with you. And Phil don't care as long as he's with a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks, and Merry Christmas. J-E-L-L-O, Jell-O, The tune here is Love in Your Eyes from the big broadcast of 1937. Summer Night is from Sing Me a Love Song. The Jell-O program comes to you over the Red Network from the Hollywood studios of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony, Incorporated. Fifteen seconds before nine. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>